Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Jurassic World The Miniature War Game. In Jurassic World The Miniature War Game, you're playing for two to four players. It takes about 60 to 90 minutes to play each scenario, and it is for ages, I would say, 13 and up. In the game Jurassic World, you're going to be playing as either your dinosaur counterparts or human beings. There's different scenarios, depending on the scenario you're going to play, as whether you're playing as some of the dinosaurs, like the uh, T-Rex or the uh, Triceratops, or even as the Marines and or the people who own the park. There's also some special characters like uh, this guy here is Roland Trembo, and you're already basically be getting decks of cards. These decks are going to be drawing cards from and placing them down on a mat. Each different type of monster or, and or I guess giant dinosaur is going to have their own different uh, areas to place certain things down. They have their own health bars as well as their own energy and or adrenaline, and you're basically going to be flipping cards over and attempting to do certain things. Usually you'll move and and attack. Now, of course, there's things like fear. There's also things like aiming and direction. There's gripping, there's uh, dodging and all of these kind of things. But mainly the idea is moving around the board, completing the scenario. Some scenarios might be you need to destroy all of the uh, raptors or you need to get the triceratops all the way across the board uh, against something like a crew of raptors and the T-Rex and other sorts of things like that. Different ones require different techniques and tactics and based on your deck strategy when you construct your deck is what you need to do in order to succeed in each scenario. It's the basic idea of the game Jurassic World The War Game. Let's go ahead and show you everything included in the game and then we'll go ahead and explain how to play a little bit. So here we have Exod Games and Universal Studios Jurassic World The War Game and as you can see it comes with quite a bit just what I've got here. This is of course a prototype so that means that there's probably going to be additional stuff that is not included here that you're going to likely see on the campaign but this is what I got to show you with different little miniatures and whatnot for the game Jurassic World. Anyway so this is basically what you're going to be getting. They're going to be getting different player boards, and there's different things like Roland Trembo. There's going to be different characters. There's the Triceratops, the Carnotaur, and Raptors. And as you can see, each of these little miniatures here are actually going to be designed based on the Jurassic World uh, 3D looking style of it. So they actually sent in the blueprints to how to make these guys perfect miniatures and also to scale to a certain extent. You're also going to have this nice uh, fully designed T-Rex and then the Triceratops over there. There'll be other things like the gate for Jurassic World and other different dinosaurs as well as a bunch of different decks there's going to be the t-rex deck over here there's going to be this deck over here for the raptors these are basically action card decks which you're going to be making of course on your own along with the character decks you can kind of select which ones you want based on what you're trying to do with that specific dinosaur and or characters these are the human beings additional action cards and this is the triceratops there's additional cards over here to kind of let you deck construct earlier before beginning the game these cards over here are fear cards and they just go on top of the deck basically when uh, certain dinosaurs get feared meaning that they're basically going to have less things to do because they're afraid and then of course human beings and these little things are going to track your HP and like I said prototypes so it's probably going to be a lot different than this and these guys probably won't even be mats they're all probably going to be boards of some sort I would imagine it also comes with a rule book explaining the game and the scenario booklet which I don't have and then of course the box and this felt board here which may or may not be a board I'm not sure how it works but they're basically hex space along with this little token or coin where you're going to be flipping to determine initiative and that's pretty much what you're going to get in the game Jurassic World the war game okay so let's go ahead and take it down below I will show you a couple ideas how the turns are going to work and the different cards and how combinations work and then I will come up and I'll give you my review so here we have Jurassic World the miniature game and it's set up for two players in a scenario where this Triceratops is trying to get to the end of the board and the Carnotaur here along with the Raptors are trying to stop it. And the round is going to play out until one of the conditions is met, whether this guy does it, he perishes or whether he gets across the board. Aside from that, there's additional characters here which will be utilizing uh, the trying to so, transport this guy across. If they die, then there's going to be four more that will pop out based on the scenarios how many of these guys you're going to get. Whereas the Carnotaur is going to have two Two raptors that will actually work with him as well. The uh, gracious game Crossmaster Arena has provided me with some terrain, which you'll probably be getting in this game as well, but because I don't have any, I'm just utilizing these big little trees here as impassable terrain, and these little small bushes here are going to be basically a rough terrain or difficult to terrain. I've got my little token here ready for initiative, and all the decks are set out next to the characters, along with all of their stats, their HP, and their adrenaline are set to the base, which is going to be uh, three for raptors, eight for the connoisseur, and then the 
this is actually Roland Trembaugh, but we'd actually be using the base stats for the characters. This is actually a named unit, a special unique unit. So uh, if you actually used him in the scenario, he would be a separate unit from the basic dudes, but he has a little bit of a stronger stat pool. And then we've got, of course, got the Triceratops over there, who's pretty tough, pretty big. The stats on here down below are gonna be movement, attack, armor, dodge, and grip, and all of them kind of have their own unique style, like these guys over here are going to have like the ability to shoot and the range, whereas these guys here don't have range because they're dinosaurs, so they have strength and grip and dodge and all that kind of thing. Anyway, the beginning of the game is pretty simple. You're going to set up your decks depending on what you're playing and how you want to utilize your dinosaurs and your heroes, and then you're going to set the rest of these cards to the side that you're not using. These action decks will run out, however, these character, I guess these are hero decks will run out, and these decks over here are actually going to be reshuffled and reused over and over again. And each of these guys have their own unique passive abilities as well. The raptors and the humans will let you draw extra cards here. Uh, the uh, Carnotaur is able to, I think he's got armor piercing, and then the Triceratops is a little bit more sturdy, a little bit more armor, harder to deal with, right? A lot of this is in French, though, but luckily on the Kickstarter, it should be uh, fairly obvious to you how all of them work. Uh, basically, how it works is everybody's going to draw a certain number of cards, and in general, you're going to be drawing five of these cards here, along, along with a certain amount of cards from this deck over here and then you're going to go ahead and set them down so in this case i'm going to go ahead and just show you how one character functions i'll place one character over here which is basically the uh active area and then one on the onboard area the rest of them will then, will then get discarded the same will happen for the rest of the characters so i'll just go ahead and place these just like that and these would get discarded as well uh and of course the human beings this is just going to go ahead and be random because whatever uh but i think you'll get the idea once i show you this how it works. Now, everybody's gone ahead and placed their cards on board, and then you're going to go ahead and check initiative. Everybody has a certain amount of initiative, and it's based on these numbers here, and if it ever becomes a tie, you're going to simply use this coin and flip it to determine the order in which the monster, or the, I keep saying monsters, but they're dinosaurs, and which way they're going to work. So we're going to go ahead and just show you how uh, an example of play here. In general, let's just say that uh, he won the coin flip, and then it'll be this one next, so we'll go ahead and flip this one over here. It tells you the base movement of these guys, which is two, but they also get a plus one hex. Uh, this one also says it has a scare plus two within four hexagons. But we don't need to worry about that because we're not going to be scaring anything. We're too far away. So which means they'll get three spaces of movement. One, two, and three. Raptors are sneaky and they want to try and get behind their units and they want to try and grab them. And they want to work in packs. This guy over here, and this guy here, is going to go ahead and move his one unit of space. He has two rotations plus an attack and an armor. So if he wants, he can go ahead and move one unit. And then if he wants, he can go ahead and rotate because rotating is important in this game for certain reasons. You'll also notice something on this side here, but I'll explain that in a little bit. The next thing we'll say that uh, the uh, Carnotaur is going to be going ahead and going next, and he is going to get two plus two hexes for movement, a rotation, and an attack. So he's actually going to be able to move three, one, two, and three. And then he's also get a free rotation, Oop, just like that. Move this tree around, I guess. And uh, he has an attack, but he's still too far away. They're too far away to attack. And then finally, we'll flip over this one here. And these guys here have a base movement of one, and then they have a fix and attack and courage, which means they protected from fear. But we'll go ahead and just move them one. And they're still not within range of attack. And their range is going to be down here. It explains how much their range is needed, and then what they need to, to hit, basically, and then how much damage they do. And after that, what happens is every player is going to have an option now to keep this card and push it over or discard it. Maybe they don't want this card after all because of all the things that have happened. But for, for example's sake, we'll just go ahead and move them all over. That's the meaning that they're going to be using them for the next round. Additionally, when you're playing, you can also use these action card, these cards here that will allow you to do certain things like plus two dodge or plus two attack. And uh, if successful, you gain adrenaline because adrenaline is important in this game. Utilizing adrenaline is going to allow you to use special abilities down below on the card. Now we'll go ahead and rinse and repeat here and uh, we'll just go ahead and start here. We'll flip over the raptors. First they have two. They won the coin flip between the humans. That means that they're going to get plus one hex uh, movement, plus one attack, and plus one grab. And if you look on this board here, it's going to have combinations. Now, red means end combo, and white means continue combo. There's always going to be three cards here at max, and unfortunately, there's no combos here. So, in an example, he's just going to, they're going to simply move their two hexes, boop, 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 just like that. Uh, and then we go ahead and go with the human beings over here. They'll flip over that one here, 
And this one says one, it's got a reflection of fix and it's got ballistic if that was important, but we'll just go ahead and move these in into position to get ready to go ahead and attack these Raptors here. In which case, when they attack, they're gonna go ahead and look at their attack, uh, attack rate versus their opponent's dodge. And if that exceeds that, then it'll do a certain amount of damage to the characters and reducing their health. Each Raptor has three health. So if you can get three damage on them, that is going to be enough to knock out one of them. But players can also go ahead and choose to play these cards, like I said before, that can protect them from taking too much damage as well as even dodging the attacks entirely. But if we now see the this guy here, this uh, T-Rex guy, he actually has all of these symbols lined up. This is attack, this is the grab, dodge. I think this is the fear and this is initiative, giving him a faster initiative. So that means all of these are plus one now. You don't look at this card ever, you just look at this one here, which means all these stats because they match are gonna give you a plus one, which is very useful. And then we're still gonna use this. Now, if he had three adrenaline, he could actually spend that adrenaline and use this down below this area here, plus two hex, plus a rotation, plus two attacks, pl uh, plus two to attack and plus two to stable. Very useful. You can actually let him get through, which means he'd get his one movement is two and three movement. And he's got this rough terrain here, so you'd have to deal with that. But basically he's gonna be able to gain bonuses and whatnot. And the game's gonna continue going on like that. I'll go ahead and show you another card as to what else can happen. If he got another card like that added, uh, he could go ahead and gain huge combos. This is called a perfect combo. And what this means is that uh, he now has plus three because the red is what ends it in a three combo. So one, two, and then a three. If this was a white, it would still just be two though. But because they're all red and they all match, this is the best kind of combo you can get, giving you plus two attack, two grab, two dodge, two of these guys here and two of these guys here. Really useful. Plus in addition, if you wanted to, you could spend that adrenaline to make this guy really, really, really powerful. And that's the basic idea of the game. Uh, you're gonna be pulling cards from the bottom whenever you remove them and you're gonna be adding new ones. And of course you can choose to get rid of this or to just move it to the side to place one over here. So it allows you to have some customization as to how you want your characters to interact with other characters. Rough train will affect units in different ways. Sometimes it'll make them cost more movement and whatnot. Some of them will kind of ignore that. And also when attacking units, you can actually look at the character's armor value and on the different sides, it'll tell you. In the front, obviously he's got more armor and on the side he has less, which makes him easier to hit, easier to take damage. When you take damage, you also can gain adrenaline. So there's all that involved in it. The idea is trying and try and get this Triceratops all the way across the board to uh, win the game. And of course, you want to have these T-Rexes and the Raptors to get on top of this dude and start doing some serious damage to it. While, of course, these guys are doing their best to protect him. But that's the basic idea of just one scenario in this game. There's a ton of stuff going on with it, and hopefully it gives you a good idea of how it works. These fear cards will also be added as well that allow you to place them on top of decks to make, sh make sure that the players run out of specific things. They, they won't be able to draw as many cards. If you draw five cards in this deck, then you would in turn actually only get two cards because you've gotten you've gotten feared so that's another way that how these guys work and all the dinosaurs have their own unique style as well as their own unique deck play styles and the different decks that you can combine to make different uh different uh, ways in which you can play this game jurassic world the miniature war game all right so that's a good idea of how you kind of move around the board and fight let's come up and talk about the game and i'll give my review so what do I think about the game Jurassic World, the miniature game? Well, this is an interesting one, right? It mixes tactics with cards. Normally I'd play games like Warhammer, which uses more of a die strategy. And of course the ruler, which moves the characters around. And then you have something like the Star Wars game in which you're gonna be utilizing the tack patterns as well as the little uh, hex, the little like, what do you call them? Templates in order to attack the units based on how you kind of move and turn around. In this one, it uses cards and card combinations. And you're trying to make the best deck possible for the specific Type of play that you have and each scenario requires a different type of play for the different dinosaurs and human beings that you're utilizing which is very very unique and interesting i like the fact that you're able to draw cards and play them down and then kind of bank them and hope that your combinations work out how you want them to but even if they don't it kind of allows you to get rid of those cards and put new ones down now there are things that mess you up like fear and if you're being grabbed on and all these other kind of things that can happen to you or with the dinosaurs and whatnot but the idea remains the same as to how you want to combat your opponents and really Everything in this game that you mess up on is, is more or less your fault. You should have made the deck this way, or you should have played this card previously, and you always see these things as how they kind of interact. Whereas in a game like Warhammer, if somebody just rolls a bunch of sixes, it's very, very likely that they're just going to win. This one takes that on its head, throws it away, and then tosses cards down for combinations because you've made the decks, you've made the dinosaurs act in that specific way, and because of that, you've either made a winning strategy or a losing strategy. There's a ton of scenarios in the game booklet, and a lot of them are in French, so I 
got to play one of them, which is basically the one I was showing you. I got to play that a couple times, see how it works. It plays up to four players, so based on the different scenarios, I have different player allocations and how you want to move around and whatnot, give you kind of a feel of basically being a dinosaur and trying to achieve these certain objectives and whatnot. And of course, the fact that the big dinosaurs have a lot of points, which means they're very, very strong, where the little ones have less, but they work very well in as a cohesive unit, where they equal up to one of the bigger units. And if you played a war game before, one of those type of games, workshop games, you'll know it has certain features that are very similar in nature, but also very different, a little more complex as far as the character boards go. You're not just simply equipping units and then sending them out to roll dice. It has a little bit more strategy, at least in my opinion, as to how that works works. Now I love Games Workshop games and I like the Star Wars game as well, but this one presents an interesting mechanic and what I'm looking forward to is seeing how they kind of develop it over time and when they release it what it's going to look like. I imagine this game is going to do very very well not only because it's Jurassic Park which is amazing but also because of the unique combat card system and, and I like the fact that it has the combos involved in it and playing them down and choosing your movement and whatnot. I'm excited to see what kind of miniatures they put in it as well. Now what do I think about it? Well first of all artwork is super solid. All the miniatures are super cool they had actually universal send them the blueprints like i said for these specific units and it makes them look just like the carnotaur this looks like the carnotaur it's also scaled specifically so they have specific rules as how they want to scale these things and this does exactly that it looks really cool the units are also interesting as well the fact that you have named characters and you have the basic units and they have their own different stats and you treat them separately and in interesting ways and it plays out like either an instant one shot game which is very very quick these games actually go pretty quick once you get the idea down you could probably play a game like this in like 45 minutes if you know the rules because it's so straightforward as to how the cards are moving around and how you're playing them and where you want to move there's always wrong moves to make and right moves to make which is really cool about war games i like that i like the games that have a lot more construction to them and straightforward tactics you do this and you do this and then this is going to happen uh, which may or may, 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 may not be, be good. The only luck involved in this game is how you draw the cards from your deck. Because there's a small amount of cards in your deck and you're going to be reshuffling them throughout, you're going to basically have your own constructed dinosaur, which is cool. Customization is always good in these type of games. Really, really enjoyed this game. Uh, there's a couple of questions I have, obviously, because there's like it's mainly in French, and um, there's like certain things about how the terror works and whatnot, and how specific ways on how grabbing works, and there's specific cards in the human deck that show ballistics and whatnot, just language barrier issues. But from what I've played, I've really enjoyed this game. I'm excited to see what you guys think down below in the comments. Let me know what you guys think specifically. What questions do you want answered? They might be, be able to answer them down below, but maybe I can help you a little bit more. But overall, that is Jurassic World, the miniature war game. Let me know down below. All right, outro. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as taking a look at right now. We're at Origins. Go ahead and go to our Unfiltered Gamer page, and we'll show you all the cool stuff coming up at our live streams every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST. We do it every Wednesday. Giveaways, a ton of great stuff. Games like this are played on the stream. In fact, this one's probably going to be played on the stream as well, if you're interested in that. As well as taking a look at our friends, everythingboardgames.com, and the Giveaway Geek. We're giving away games at unfilteredgamer.com. Do check that out as well. Thank you so much, Patreons, Patreons, Patreons. Friends. You guys are making my life real nice and easy for that uh, live stream giveaway. So if you want to join the group, you can go ahead and get instant access to our specific new series, which we're doing Unbreakable Board Games, and a couple other cool things that we're doing on there as well, showing you some interesting pre-release stuff before anybody else gets a chance to see them. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to... Did you hear that?